You're listening to the Real Estate Runway podcast, powered by Quattro Capital, where we are all about alternative business and investment strategies to help you amplify life and maximize wealth. Here's your host, the recovering engineer turned multifamily investor, Chad Sutton. All right, everyone. This is another episode of the Real Estate Runway podcast. Today, you're going to get a Quattro vetted vendor who we deal with on our insurance side and risk mitigation. If you are an operator or if you are investing in an operator who doesn't have this in place, you should probably think twice. Insurance can be a very tumultuous world, especially in the commercial real estate world. And there are about six ways that they find out how not to pay your claim. And it is really on you to make sure you have the right risk mitigation strategy and prep work in place to make sure when you have a loss, it is paid out. Happy to introduce Mark Deddens with iStorm Group. We use them across our portfolio nationwide. They not only help us ensure we have the right baselines and documentation in place to show how the property was before a loss, but also help us process that claim and, and have the horsepower to really go to bat with the insurance companies for you. And the best part is no money out of your pocket. So hop on the, hop on the podcast here and we'll show you how that works. Here we go. All right, all right, all right. Real Estate Runway family, welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Runway podcast. I'm your host, Chad Sutton. We're powered by Quattro Capital on this show. Remember, friends, if you get any value out of this show, please scroll down, leave us a five-star review and a thoughtful comment. Those ratings and comments are worth their weight in gold and are the only way to increase the reach of the show. Remember, you can also follow us via our parent company, Quattro Capital, on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, at Team Quattro Capital, one word, no special characters, or just visit us at thequattroway.com. We love hearing from you. You want to request a topic, say hello, or just say something that I misspoke on. I've heard that before. <laughs> Drop us a note at podcast at thequattroway.com. Love to hear from you. And if you want to apply to be on the show, please visit us at thequattroway.com slash podcast. And now on to your scheduled production. All right. We're here today with Mark Deddens, dear friend and colleague of mine. We work together extensively in the multifamily space. He is the founder and CEO of iStorm. Mark, welcome to the show. How are you doing today, friend? I'm great, Chad. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, hey, before we get into it, tell us a little bit about who Mark Deddens is and, and what prompted you to found iStorm. And then I really want to spend some time on the awesome value you bring to our team and what, you know, some of the owners out there would benefit from. So let's start with who is Mark? So I'm kind of a serial entrepreneur. I served four years in the Navy, which kind of launched me into the get it done kind of guy that I am today. And then I've held numerous ventures. I stumbled into the ice storm world, storm restoration world in 2011. And I had my aha moment in about March of 2012. And that aha moment was when I discovered how insurance companies were taking advantage of multifamily property owners when they had a fair, reasonable, and legitimate storm damage or catastrophic loss. And so I spent the ensuing year proving what I thought to be true. And then when I had statistical data to support that the model worked, we're off and running. So we just completed our 11th year and we've settled over $120 million in large claim losses to date. And we've got a 95% indemnification rate in settling those losses. So pretty proud of that. Good milestone. I've got a phenomenal team and we just continue to grow. So it's, it's exciting. Yeah. Thanks for that, Mark. And what you guys don't know about Mark that I do is he's also a pretty good golfer. So if you guys are into, you know, <laughs> betting on the golf course, I'm, I'm sure we could get him or get him up for a round, but anyway, so anyway, if we hop into the meat of the show today, you know, Quattro Capital has been doing business with iStorm for quite some time now with great success. So let's, let's kind of talk a little bit about you know, what are some of the unmitigated risks that you as a property owner are dealing with as a property owner battling the insurance company? And let's kind of slide into how your company solves that for us and the value that you guys bring. So let's kind of start with what don't we know about, you know, what a claim is really going to be like. Yeah. So Chad, I speak at multifamily conferences across the country on a regular basis. And, you know, the topic always begins with I say, show of hands, who here has ever had an experience with an insurance company that didn't turn out the way you thought, or you were treated fairly. And of course, everybody's hand goes up. So we've all had a pretty lousy experience. The thing that's important is that if you do not have 
a formidable proactive risk management program, you are at risk because most people have no idea what's in their policy. And unfortunately, when they find out what's in their policy, the shoe has dropped and it can be an unpleasant surprise. The thing I talk about a lot is that your policy is a contract. When you sign your insurance agreement, your policy, and you pay the premium, then both parties are now bound to abide by the terms of that contract. Even some of the brokers don't even know the hidden language in there. So first and foremost, you have to understand what are my coverage limitations, if any, and exclusions, and then, you know, find your contract accordingly. Uh, insurance companies, you know, they're investors. Everybody says they're in risk management or loss mitigation. They're, they're not, they're investors. They have your premiums. Those monies are out there making money for someone and it's not you. So when the shoe drops, cause it will not if, but when, you know, somebody's going to drive a car through a building, tree's going to fall, lightning's going to hit, hail's going to fall, something's going to happen. So when that shoe drops, are you ready? And so understanding the policy and then understanding the six primary delay, deny, and reject tactics. And I'm not saying insurance companies won't pay you millions of dollars on a loss. You just need to show them why. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And so let's slide into a little bit, you know, what is iStorm and what do you do, right? So we're pretty clear that, okay, if you haven't put together a risk manage management, I can't speak English. If you haven't put together a risk management strategy, then you are at risk when a claim happens. Not if, and the more you own, it, that, ask me how I know, you, something is going to happen and you're going to need to use that policy. So in steps iStorm and, and you, know, you discovered you had an aha moment back in, in 2011 and you built a company around it. Let's talk a little bit about you know, what you guys do and how you're protecting my company and our interests and then we'll you know, apply that going forward. No, that's a good segue into the issue. So insurance companies, as I said, the delay, deny, reject, that, that, that's, you know, it's their mantra for the most part. And they use about six different premises to say, no, we're not paying. Four of which generally aren't in your policy, in your contract. They're just, the language isn't in there. They'll tell you improper installation, past its useful life, not functional damage, manufacturer's defects. Well. That's all well and good, but they have an opportunity to do underwriting. And if you requested an underwriting report, you'd see that it's seriously inadequate. So they really can't, they don't have a big leg to stand on. Two things they can get you on is to tell you, you didn't report it in time or it's old damage. And old damage is the number one arrow in their quiver. So we do what's called a baseline inspection. New client comes on board. You came on board, you had 30 something assets. We went and inspected every one of them and we documented everything exterior. If it's on the outside of the building. We can tell you what it's made of, what condition it is, if it needs any maintenance, most importantly, whether it had any wind or hail damage. And those that do not, that's great. Cause now I've got a stake in the ground as a condition of the property on a given date and time. Then what we do is we plug that property into a proprietary weather tracking system. I don't need to rely on a property manager to call me. I know when wind or hail passes. Now I got to get a phone call for a fire or a flood or a tree or somebody running a car through building, but wind and hail is not going to slip by. So we go back and we re-inspect Chad and we compare the results of that inspection with the previous inspection. If there's no change, guess what? We ruled out that date, right? It becomes the new baseline because the weather tracking systems, they're, they're good. They're probably 80% accurate, but a lot of times we'll, somebody says, Hey, hail fell on this property. We get out there and look at it and it didn't, that's not a waste of time. Cause I ruled that date out. And when I do have damages, I go back to my client and say, Hey, Chad, you've got damage, but we'll also tell you how much damage, right? Hey, it's $20,000 worth of minor wind damage. And you got a $10,000 deductible. I would venture to say, don't file a claim. But if I got $2 million worth of hail damage, the $10,000 deductible, it generally doesn't take very long to get that claim in. Then when we connect with the adjuster. It's like, you know, you want to write the estimate or you want us to, because I got before and afters and he doesn't. So generally they're pretty cooperative. Most of the large loss guys have come to know us and trust us because it makes their job easier. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So if I can kind of reiterate that back to you, you know, you, what you guys will do. And, and when we came on with our 30 properties across the Southeast, this is exactly what you did. 
you came out, you, you sent your inspectors out to the property, you generate a baseline of all the exterior content and even some recommendations for repair of some stuff we already had. And yep. then, you know, every you're you're monitoring all the incidents, of course, for things that are one off and can't be tracked, you have to be notified, but for trackable information, which is mainly wind and hail, you're going to have, you know, a, a database tell you when that happens, you're going to reinspect. So then, you know, okay, well, there was no damage as of this date or there was, and that, that really going back to what you said, the number one, you know, deniability that an insurance carrier will use is it's old damage. And so talk about, you know, backing them into a corner and, and breaking their number one quiver over your knee. They can't really say that when you know exactly what the building was before. And you can say, well, guess what? These last three hailstorms came through. We, we documented and we know that wasn't there. Have I got that right? You're 100% correct. Now I'll tell you something else that's gaining a lot of traction and our owners really have just made us a part of is due diligence. You know, you get an offering memorandum, you strike a deal and you've got 60 days to cure. I need to be your first phone call. Case in point, I had a property in Atlanta, Georgia called Torrey Pines. It's actually like a two minute testimonial video from that owner on it. And we went down there, you know, we identified some stuff that he probably should address, but it had wind and hail and it ended up being, I don't know, six, $700,000 loss. And uh, so last thing you want to do is a buyer is go back to the seller and say, Hey guys, we got a problem. Right. But he did. And he said, look, you can, you know, discount your purchase price by $700,000, or you can file a claim and do an assignment of benefits and we'll take care of it. And that's what he did. Of course he called me up. He says, Mark, you better settle this claim, <laughs> which we did. So it was great. But the last thing you want to do is inherit a property with wind and hail. Cause guess what? You're stuck with old damage. They've got that, the insurance company, no matter what they do, well, you could argue it, but in their underwriting, they should uncover that, but they won't. But then they'll throw it at you if you have a future storm. Now there's other indicators that would support a future storm date, but it's just bad karma to, and to buy a property that's got that kind of situation. So that's been really helpful to the owners and, you know, hey. You know, you buy $10 million property, you buy $50 million property, $1 million is $1 million, $500,000, $500,000, right? Absolutely. So yeah. we view everything as if we yeah. own the property and my whole team operates like that. What would you do if? Yeah, that's super powerful, Mark. And so let, let's segue with that. So now we know kind of the, the preemptive risk management strategy. Now let's fast forward to the day where a claim comes. You know, okay, we, we've got damage. We need to file a claim. What does your company do for the client from that day forward? Well, once the claim's in, we get an adjuster meeting and meet on site with the insurance carrier adjuster. Sometimes it's a staff adjuster. Sometimes it's an independent adjuster. Sometimes it's a hired consultant. Really doesn't matter to us because we're just going to do some show and tell, right? First thing we do is we send them our report because the post storm inspection report has the original baseline information and then the post storm information in red. So they can say, oh, two years ago, this thing was perfect. Today it's trashed. So now when they walk on site, all they have to do is see what we've shown them in the report. It's really, it's, it's really seamless because at the end of the day, my clients want to get back to pre-loss operating condition as soon as possible. And so us being able to shorten the curve on that settlement, you know, some of these multi-million dollar claims can take 12, 12 rounds, you know, I, I want to knock it out in the first round. That's our goal. So let's get them done quick. We just settled one. Well, we settled one of yours inside of like 30 days. And then yep, I just settled another one in 40 days. It was $2.5 million. That's fast. So once we reach the settlement, money moves to you. We can get the project underway because nothing's worse than, look, your calling card, your business card on a property is what does this property look like? Nobody wants to see the inside if there's shingles missing everywhere. They're kind of like, this is a dump, right? So let's get it back to pre-loss operating condition, make it look nice and, and, and let's move on and continue to do business. So the settlement process generally. You know, and they still have tactics. You know, if you want to challenge the data loss, 
I have forensic weather specialists that I use that'll go into Doppler and they'll produce a 250 page report that says you're wrong. It did fall. So we have, you know, we have structural engineers, forensic engineers, we have public adjusters, I have appraisers, I have a legal arm. If you want to get in the fight, we'll go 12 rounds. But I don't enter it. We have a 95% indemnification rate, Chad. That means I don't enter something I don't think we can win. Does that make sense? That's crystal clear. And I think, you know, folks, you've heard me talk a lot about this on this show. You know, whether you're listening as an investor, you know, learning how to vet sponsors you're investing with, or whether you're listening as a young operator or an experienced operator, you have to focus on what you are best at and hire the rest out. And this is a situation, the insurance world is a discipline in itself. And just, just handling claims is a discipline in itself. And so, you know, I strongly encourage you to get a risk management plan or, you know, preferably ice storm here in place because, you know, you, you really don't know what this, we've had some of these go south and we've had some go very well. This one, they had to actually call me up and say, Hey, guess what? We, we settled. We're done. It's been like four weeks. Okay, good. So it's like they handle so much of the situation that we're just kind of off doing what we do best, knowing that our risk is handled. And that, you know, we have preemptively set ourselves up for success when something happens. So can't say how much I appreciate you guys enough, Mark, but wanted to get on that soapbox for a minute. Well, I appreciate that. And I get a couple of comments. One is we've freed up one of your partners a ton of time. If you talk to Kim, she's always like, oh, yes, thank I did. Thank you. Because she was a resource that was allocated to this and she just loves not dealing with it. The other thing that I just wanted to offer up is that. I have a checklist. It's actually in a slide deck on a presentation that I do, but I have a checklist. Here's the elements to a formidable risk management program. It, all somebody's got to do is email me, mark at iStormGroup.com. I'll send it over. And if you can pull it in the house with your own resources, have at it and good luck and go get them. If you can't, or you look at those elements and say, hey, guess what? Maybe I ought to be better talking to you guys and we'll set up a little WebEx and have a chat. But you know, if you have the resources, it can be done. There's going to be some external resources that you're not going to hire, right? You're not going to have a public adjuster that you know and trust. You're not going to have an appraiser. You're not going to have a forensic weather specialist. You're probably not going to have an engineer. All those people are in my camp. We got about 80 people across the country in 35 states. And this is what we do, but I'm happy to share the checklist. And if you can work it out, work it out. But I would tell you, you are at risk and it's all going to start with that policy review. Don't wait until the shoe drops. I've had that happen and boy, it's ugly. You get some co percentage deductible. It's not a percentage of the loss amount. It's a percentage of the value of the building. So I've literally had losses where the claim would have been, you know, $40,000 a building but their co-insurance was 80 based on the value of the building. That's just, it's cuckoo, right? So you can do one of two things. You can either keep that kind of insurance in case a tornado rips it to the ground. And then if you got 20 buildings at 40 grand, you do the math. That's still ugly. You know, up the ante on your premium and get rid of that co-insurance deductible. It's, it's, it's not good. And most people find out about it was too late. So get that policy reviewed. Preferably by a licensed public adjuster. We have that resource. You can find your own resource if you want, but get it reviewed. Because if you're trusting your broker or your insurance age, age, insurance carrier, they're not going to point it out to you. They're not going to. And that's a pretty sobering point. So let's hop on a, a higher point here because you've seen some pretty crazy stuff in your time in the field. Give me, give me your favorite what the, how the hell did this happen story? You know, you walk up on site, you see this, this loss that you're investigating. What's the coolest story you've got here that uh, you'd be willing to share? I have a feeling, you know, this story. So I get a, I get a text from one of my owners. I'm, I want you a, to tell it. I really want you to got tell a car it. in a building. It's got a car in a building in the front entryway, but I, I get this text and I said, oh, well, why, how did he pull out the brick and sit there and I'm talking to the owner. He goes, no, there's a car behind it. So there's this red car and behind it is this black car. And it's like embedded in the building. And I said, mm -hmm. oh man, so my son works for me and he's going to the site. It's about an hour for me and he's 20 minutes and he's going with one of my EMS contractors. He said, dad, you don't need to come down. We got this. I said, oh, Seth, I have to come down. 
Because somebody said this car came off the highway and it's impossible. There's a ravine in about a hundred yards and a parking lot. And I said, number two, I got to meet this guy in the red car that pulled in behind the accident scene. So get down there at pull up. And I know this property where we were off it about a year and a half ago. And I look and here's the EMS, the fire trucks. And I walked up to the scene commander, some fire guy. And I go, dude, I said, what, what am I looking at? He goes, he came off this hill over here. I said, no. So I see a police tent up on top. It's at least 150 feet up and it's at least a football field away. This guy was getting on the highway, probably doing a hundred miles per hour, skips the median, flies over the guardrail, travels probably 120 yards in midair and strikes his building at the second level, it's a three-story building. So the red car that was sitting there was sitting there the whole time. And this guy just barrels. And then there was a woman on her porch smoking a cigarette and drinking coffee 10 feet away from where the impact was. And she comes down. She says, yeah, I saw it. She goes, I was just drinking my coffee and smoking a cigarette. And here comes this SUV barrel rolling through the sky. I've never seen anything like it. Matter of fact, the adjusters never saw anything like it. The EMS guy was 20 years, the scene commander, 25 years. He goes, never seen anything like it. It was surreal. Needless to say, unfortunately, he didn't make it. But, you know, this is 930 in the morning. It was crazy. It's crazy. I got the photos. They tell the story all the time because when you see the photo, you're like, that didn't, that didn't happen. Everybody says the same thing. Why did that guy pull in behind that car? But it flew it. That's it's something else. That's, that's still the wildest story I think I've ever heard. But what it tells you folks is Murphy's law in, in the, in the world of operating properties, if it can happen somewhere, it probably will, you know, and, and including a flying barrel rolling SUV into the side of your building. So anyway, I stormed to the rescue. They handled that one as well. So, yeah. all right. Well, Mark, thanks for coming on the show. We're, before we let you go, we're going to have to hit you with the quattro four questions before you get out of here. Are you ready? Yes, sir. All right. First question. What is your superpower in life or business and how does it benefit you? Well, I'm, I'm going to deviate from what we talked about before, because I think my superpower is service first period, life and business. When you focus on doing the right thing, you know, and just exceed expectations, your own expectations for bringing value, then results naturally follow. I've never chased a dollar and I never will. If you are passionate about what you believe in and you do that in all aspects of your life, then you'll have success. Whether you like it or not, it'll find you. And people understand that. I love that, Mark. And now let's go the other direction. So we've talked a lot of, a lot today about the value that you bring and the value that your company brings, but Give me some dirt, man. What is your biggest mistake can be life or business? And what did you learn from it? Well, we don't have that much time, so I'm not going to do the life mistakes. I will tell you that I Fair embrace enough. challenges and problems because when you encounter them, it's an opportunity to grow. So you solve the problem, solve it immediately, and then you put stuff in place so you don't have a repeat performance. Probably the biggest mistake is I trusted a non-certified I-Storm contractor. Took him on his word to mitigate some fire damage through the initial mitigation and muck out of the unit. And uh, he quoted us five grand and ended up charging 14,000. So he tried to charge that to my owner. And I was the one that gave him a verbal. So we ate it. You know, I didn't, it wasn't enough money to file a, E and O claim or anything, but we ate it. And you know, that client has been a friend of mine for seven, eight years. He said, no, Mark, we'll split this. It wasn't your problem. I said, no, it was my problem. So the lesson learned was if it's not an ice storm certified vetted contractor, forget it. I'm out. That's a good one. You know? And then, like you said, when you have processes, you put, or when you have problems, you put processes in place to mitigate the problem from reoccurring. So I, and I know from working with you that. That is, that is a very strict vetting process. And the answer is no, if they don't pass. <laughs> very good. Well, next question. 
You have a free gift you'd like to offer to the listeners today. And I know we take advantage of this all the time, so I'll let you speak to it. Yeah, sure. I mean, basically we are ready, willing, and able, no contractual relationship, nothing. If you have a property that you suspect, um, you know, could have some problems associated with wind or hail, or maybe you just got a property that's got been giving you fits, roofing system, whatever. We'll come and we'll do a baseline inspection for you. And that's a full written report. We didn't get too deep into it, but if it's on the exterior, we're going to tell you windows, shutters, entry doors, awnings, gutters, downspout, siding, foundation. If it's on the exterior of AC units, power junction boxes, and we'll give you a very factual account of the condition of that property. And then it's all supported by time date stamp photos. Some are in the PDF report, representative photos, but they have a link to like four or 500. But we'll do that for you for absolutely nothing. I don't care if it's in Fargo, North Dakota or Sarasota, Florida. You just give us a call, send us an email and we'll get a team out there and we'll do an inspection and report for you. Yeah, folks, I'll second that. That is a huge value and we have used it exactly 30 times. So <laughs> anyway, last question, Mark, you know, at Quattro, one of our four pillars is philanthropy, very important to us. And so we love to give our, our guests an opportunity to mention, you know, their philanthropic interests and, uh, you know, kind of where they're putting their money. A lot of times our listeners have been known to give alongside of you to said charity. So, you know, where, where do you and Tammy like to put your money in support of, uh, on your philanthropic side? Yeah. So in December of 2001, my wife and I, we, we have five children, but we lost twin boys in December of 2001. So. Since that time, we have donated pre ice storm. We just donated our personal funds and whatnot into either spiritual or hunger call, anything with children, prenatal illness. And we did that through a variety of different areas. And then once ice storm got going, part of our corporate social responsibility program is to donate to the Drew and Cole Deddens Foundation. And actually this year we will hit 300,000 with our final end of year donation. And we put a lot of money into St. Jude's in Memphis, Columbus nationwide children's and just various other would we'll do church organizations. We send kids to, you know, spiritual youth camps, churches that have daycare where families are struggling a little bit. We'll subsidize it with food or swing sets or play areas or sleeping mats. Remember the little mat you got to sleep on. So that's what we do. We're pretty, we're pretty adamant. It has to do with children, raising children, maintaining their health and wellness. You just, just call us up. Cause I'm all, I always have an ear to the ground cause I got a real soft spot in my heart for that because it reminds us of how blessed we are to have the five we have and it helps keep Drew and Cole alive, you know? So that's kind of what we do. Yeah. I love that, Mark. Thank you for sharing your heart on that. And, you know, couldn't agree more. We, we, I, I echo that sentiment and I know a lot of our listeners do as well that, you know, children can't help the hand that they're dealt. So if you feel compelled, you know, anywhere that benefits children, you know, I know Mark and Tammy would, would appreciate that. So, okay, Mark, before we let you go, what is the best way for our listeners to get in touch with you if they want to, you know, hear more about your services or just ask some questions about, you know, the complex world that is insurance? 937-572-0746. That's my mobile. All of my team is first name at iStormGroup.com. So you can call Mark, Seth, Eric, Liz, or email us at iStormGroup.com. And then again, you have my mobile, 937-572-0746. I will pick up or I will call you back directly. I believe in being transparent. So. It's not a hidden contact game. And if you just have questions or you have some sort of problem or you're in, involved in some loss and you want some advice, I'm happy to give it as well. So, all right. Thank you for that, Mark. And as always, folks, if you're driving down the road, don't sweat it. Just scroll down in whatever modality you're listening to this podcast in that email, phone number, everything will be right there clickable for you. So, so don't worry about trying to write it down as you're driving. All right, everyone. This has been another episode of the Real Estate Runway Podcast. Until next time, over and out. 
All right, Real Estate Runway family, don't forget, if you got any value out of the show, please scroll down and leave us a five-star review and a thoughtful comment. Those ratings and comments are worth their weight in gold, and we really appreciate them. They're the only way to increase the reach of the show. As a reminder, you can also follow us at our parent company, Quattro Capital, on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Team Quattro Capital, one word, no special characters, or by simply visiting us at thequattroway.com. Until next time, over and out. We hope this episode was insightful and brought value to your day. If so, please be awesome and leave us a five-star review. Find out how Team Quattro can help you at thequattroway.com. Until next time, this is the Real Estate Runway Podcast.